Welcome to this video tutorial, one of many in a series designed to get you up and running with LeapFrog. This video is part 4 of 4 discussing drill hole data in LeapFrog. During the first three parts of this series, I imported drill hole data, fixed the errors, and selected appropriate colors for my units. In this video, I'm going to cover adding additional drill hole data to your LeapFrog project. As I mentioned in part 1, when it comes to importing data, it's best to only import the tables and the columns you need for modeling. Adding unnecessary data in the beginning can cause issues as the project progresses. However, frequently addition of data is needed, therefore there are a number of different methods of adding new data to an existing data set. In this video, I will show you how to append and reload drill hole data. Appending allows us to add new drill holes to the project, while reloading allows us to update existing drill holes with relogged codes or other changes. In addition to appending and reloading, whole new tables of information for existing drill holes can be added to the project. For example, in this project, I don't have an assay table. Since one is available, I will add it now. I can add a new table to the project by right-clicking the drill holes item in the project tree and selecting Import from File, Interval Values. Once I locate the table I'd like to import, I'll select Open, and I'm presented again with the Import window. I will import the assay information as numeric data and click Finish. There is also an option to import individual columns into an existing set of drill holes if it was missed during the initial import, and I'll show that in a couple of minutes. Let's start now with Appending. Appending is for brand new drill hole data that LeapFrog has never seen before. To append data, right click on the drill holes object and select Append. I'm going to start by browsing for the caller file. Once I select the caller file, click OK, and we can see again that it's automatically detected the survey and the geology table, but we're also going to click Add and select the weathering table. Once we've selected all the necessary tables, click Import. As I mentioned, the initial import set up the table structure. Therefore, all of the selections you made previously will still exist, and we can simply progress Next, 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 and Finish. And we've now appended new drill hole data to our table. So now, if we take a look at the drilling, we can see there's significantly more. If you have added new drill holes to a cumulative table that also contains existing drill holes in LeapFrog, they can be brought in using the Reload Drill Holes option. Reloading drill holes replaces the existing tables with new ones. This can be done if you have added any information to the existing columns, such as new assays back from the lab or updated logging. Reloading is also the function we would use if the errors were fixed in the original database outside of LeapFrog and we wanted to update these tables in LeapFrog. During the append or reload process, we are not able to add any additional columns of data, but fortunately, there is a way to do that. Columns in the interval table that were not imported during the initial drill hole data import can be added to that table at any time. In this case, we are going to add a column to the contamination table that wasn't originally imported. To do this, simply right-click the table and select New Column, Import Column. Select the table that contains the new column you wish to add, and it will open up this table. I now have the ability to import this additional column. If you come up with an illegal column name, you can simply select Fix It For Me and it will do any of the necessary changes it needs to do. Now we can click Finish, and we can see we have added a new column of data to our contamination table. This brings me to the end of a four-part series discussing drill hole data in LeapFrog. We began with importing and visualizing data. We then learned how to fix the errors and validate our data visually. Then we looked at color maps and how to display drill hole data in LeapFrog. And lastly, we talked about adding additional data to your LeapFrog project. 